We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Nom nom nom. Is it time for brunch? <laughs> Mmm, it smells delicious. Welcome to Brunch Talk by the Dateable Podcast. I hope you're munching and drinking as we keep talking. I feel like that should be an ad for brunch. Not that there would be an ad for brunch. Nom, nom, nom. But yes, exactly. That should be on your real UA. Amongst many other things. I feel like every time I brunch now, I'm going to think of you saying that. And I wish oh, people good. could see. Actually, you can see. If you go to YouTube, you can see good UA's plug. facial expression as she was doing that really really good plug i am so excited for brunch this coming weekend because i'm getting all you can eat dim sum (laughs) oh oh i'm super super jealous that sounds freaking amazing if it's good i'll take you when you come to la 24 dollars All you can eat, and it's like everything on the menu. Okay, well, let me know because I'll be booking my LA trip like next week. That's (laughs) the case. But we did. We are bringing our Pepto Bismol just in case. Oh my. Like a responsible 40 year old that we are, we bring all the medicine just in case. Oh my God. You know? That's how you know you're about to go to a solid restaurant when you show up <laughs> with the Pepto to get ahead of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not expecting high quality food, but I do also think my chances of getting food poisoning are probably like around 20 to 30 percent. So. <laughs> Don't, don't want to risk it. I love you know? it. You know, I don't actually have any brunch plans this weekend, but I do think that one of my favorite times, and actually when I was single, it was also, and it's carried over to having a partner, is in the morning, I wake up, make like, you know, eggs, hash browns, toast, basically what you would get at most brunch spots, right? Very traditional mm-hmm. brunch. Open the window, get the fresh air coming through, and just enjoy that meal. Like, simple pleasure. I love it's that. So satisfying. And now I do that with my partner. So I love that. It's a great trick, too, because why go to a restaurant where you have to stand in line, wait for the food, and you're just getting eggs and toast anyway? Make it at home and then go for a a walk and drink your coffee. I think it's a great idea. Exactly. It's so relaxing. So brunch can come in all shapes and forms, Pepto (laughs) included. (laughs) Pepto Pepto included, but not ideally. (laughs) Uh, Pepto may be needed for this question. I don't know. Maybe (laughs) it could could help. But here's the question (laughs) for this episode. The question is, when is the right time to ask for exclusivity or DTR, define the relationship, when you've been dating someone? Yeah, and some more context. Uh, This person wrote in and said, I was curious because I was pretty close to the two women I had been dating for two months. I lost both. One of them already became exclusive with someone else. Mm. 
Well, the timing thing, and we've talked about this before, there's really no right timing. This is a very individual question. So if you feel like you're ready to define the relationship with someone, whether that's on the third date or the fifth date or the 10th date, doesn't matter. If you feel it, it's the right time. That's the right time. I think sometimes we feel like we're racing against some sort of timeline. Like, oh, it's been on, we've been on three dates. Shouldn't we have the DTR conversation already? Or uh, how come we still haven't had that conversation don't put that pressure on yourself a relationship already gives you a lot of pressure and anxiety <laughs> why have those external forces stress you out so my first initial thought is let's figure out when do you think is the right time and that's the right time it's interesting because we've heard a lot of people say like they view exclusivity different than defining the relationship really defining okay. the relationship almost feels more serious more committed mm -hmm. and i think that you know i was a little skeptical of this at first but the more and more I'm coming around to it because I do think there is like an ease in and I don't think that you know if you really are truly looking for a, a committed relationship just being like I'm exclusive in this person not giving you what you're looking for I don't think that's a solution either but what it is nice for is it can start these conversations and especially if sex is on the table that's a really yeah. easy area to bring up that hey you know like I'm at this place in my life that I, you know, want to be exclusive before having sex because I want to be sleeping with one person and know they're doing the same. And I think with COVID, <laughs> that is not an unreasonable ask whatsoever. So I think that's totally fair game pending that is what you want. If you don't want that, then of course, you don't need to say that. And I think, though, the other piece is not being afraid to say notions of a committed relationship, even before you have this official DTR convo. And we've talked about it before. We don't think this needs to be like this sit down and let's hash it out convo. It let's can just be a, a simple. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that. But I think even before you get to a point where it's more formalized, you can say like, hey, I'm looking for a committed relationship. Like even knowing that you both are on the same page is a huge step. Yeah. And the timing of all of this can be a little tricky. You know, my favorite show, The Bachelor, which is no longer my favorite show. I haven't watched the last two seasons. Good. So that's a complete <laughs> lie. But if you watch all the other, se like a hundred seasons of it, you know that The Bachelor always falls in love simultaneously with multiple women. And some relationships just move faster than the other. So then he ends up choosing the one where he felt like the relationship progressed the most. So when we're in a dating culture where we do date multiple people, it could happen that someone could have feelings with someone else much faster than they do with you. And that is okay, right? Like you might see that as you losing that person, but maybe at the end of the day, see it as that person found their match. So right. that gives you the chance to find yours as well. We all want people to be happy in relationships. So you didn't lose this person is that this person found a better match and you just go find one for yourself too. Totally. I've had so many situations that I remember being the person that they didn't move forward with. And two of them that are coming to mind are now married to the people that they did. So it's like, mm. clearly, this was a good match for them and a good fit for yeah. them. And now that I've found my person, I'm like, you know, I'm freaking happy for them. Like, good for yes. them. You know, we just weren't the right fit. So I think there is that what you were saying is there's going to always be this situation that you can't control if someone jives better with someone else. That being said, I think you can put Put your best foot forward to be connecting with dates as much as you possibly can. And there may be a time that it's just not enough. But I think by putting out there, like, what is it that our common goals are letting this person know that you also are looking for a committed relationship if that's what you're looking for and then using that time to get to know them and connect on a deeper level that this person feels deeply seen and heard with you and if that's the case even if they're dating someone else and this person asks them for exclusivity they're going to be like well I have this other person that's interesting in yeah. my pipeline but if they are dating multiple people and you've never Never said anything you are having superficial conversations on dates of course they're going to take this other option right yep. because they probably have a better vibe going with them but i think ultimately if they really did have that vibe with you they would probably come to you at that stage and say like hey this is what's going on for me where are you at too what intrigues me about this question julie is that this person said two women 
<laughs> that I've been seeing. I lost them both. <laughs> also means you were not committed yourself, were you? You were also right. mitigating risk, hedging your bets. And sometimes when you do that too much, and I'm saying this person is, but people can feel it on dates. Yes, they can. If you're not fully devoted to creating connection or you're not fully present, they can feel it. And of course, they will go with someone else who is more in it than you are. So I get it. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You're dating around. But if you truly feel strongly about one person, show them tell them, yes. let them know. Because in today's dating world, it's like you never know how many people the person you're seeing is also seeing. No, I would so much rather shoot my shot and then say like, I actually don't want this with you. And then yes. you can move on. They can move on to find the person that's a better suited match for them. I think this goes back to the fact that like we view dating as a game and yeah. we're so achievement focused that this whole notion of losing this person mm. and, you know, not not doing it fast enough like you should do it when you and this person have a connection and you're like i can't imagine not dating this person not because you're like hedging your bets with multiple people and afraid they're gonna go off with someone else this isn't mm -hmm. like i don't know the hunger games or something where you need to get your <laughs> opponent and move forward right i think a lot of people would describe the dating scene as hunger games so. <laughs> <laughs> that might resonate with a lot of people <laughs> Yeah, I remember you also don't want to pressure the other person. I remember this one yeah. time I was seeing two guys. I felt like my feelings were much stronger with one of them. So I was breaking up the other one. And he said, would things change if I told you right now that you're mine and you're my girlfriend and I want to take you on a vacation and we're going to do this? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> you can't force it. I already have feelings for someone else. So even that he like try to win in this in the situation it just made me cringe even more it's like no i've already told you how i feel but i think that's what it comes down to instead of focus on on when's the right time to have this conversation focus on how do you make those feelings so strong with mm. one another that it's undeniable that it's the right connection. Mm. Like I remember when I met my now partner, I wasn't even dating other people because mm -hmm. I just felt strongly about him. And I was like, I've dated enough to know what's out there. I have had enough interactions in my life, friends wise, to know who I jive with. There's something interesting here. And then I wasn't even thinking about like defining the relationship. But because we did have that connection, it was something that was brought up really early. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had these conversations probably within the first month, but it felt right. And I think other people I've also, you know, either wanted to have that conversation and they didn't or and I could feel that. So it wasn't even like I had the conversation. And I yeah. think ultimately, you know, if things are moving in the direction of, you know, a defined relationship, like I had another my most serious ex before this partner. I remember, I don't know, I think like it was like a couple months that we didn't define the relationship, but we were doing all this stuff together. This episode is made possible by Armoire. Armoire makes getting dressed easy. With a clothing rental membership from Armoire, build the perfect wardrobe with brands that are high quality, unique, and recommended just for you. All you have to do is take a five-minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic, personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. Then when you're ready for new clothes, just swap them out. Listen, I live in Southern California. There is absolutely no need for puffer coats or any sort of those winter jackets. But when I travel anywhere else in the world in these cold months, I'm often burdened with the task of getting winter clothes. And now with Armoire, I can just rent my winter wardrobe. It's brilliant. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style, spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. It was very clear that it was going in that direction. And then one day we we're just walking down the street and he's like, oh yeah, like you're my girlfriend, right? Like that was our DTR yeah. convo. And I'm like, obviously, right? Yeah, it's the DTR doesn't need to be so contrived. I feel like when you feel like it's right, it's probably right. And it doesn't have to be like my partner was very defiant to 
labels. He didn't, he did not want labels. And so we didn't define the relationship for like at least five months, I would say. But we were with each other exclusive. I mean, like, I don't know how he had time for other people because we were right. basically together that whole time. And it didn't give me anxiety after kind of like spending so much time with him. It's just like, I just knew that this was something. So it doesn't have to be so formal. Like, are you, you are this to me or I'm this to you. It's like, you just, you feel like it's the right moment and you just tell each other. That's it. Yeah, I think mine kind of came in stages too. I think it started off as like the exclusivity chat because we were like, you know, getting intimate. So mm-hmm. it started that way. And then it became more of us deciding that we're going to both delete the apps. So we kind of did that together and got rid of them. And then I think like I just called him my boyfriend, like in front of friends, like because like mm-hmm. we'd had these convos, but we didn't necessarily have like this like, are we officially boyfriend, girlfriend, yeah. but we had like taken all these other steps. And then when he heard me say it, he's like, oh, yeah, like, of course, like, this sounds good. I'm going to say it back. Right? <laughs> that's, a, that's like a great test. I don't want to say test, but it is kind of a test when you are around your friends or his friends and mm-hmm. you have them introduce you. Yeah, that's kind of like, hmm, how is he going to introduce me? That, right, that would be interesting. Right. Or take the reins yourself, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> But I know a lot of people asking this question want a definitive answer. Is it like in the first month? Is it in the first three dates? And that is not the way to look at this. There is no answer for you. And also like your first three dates could be extremely intense and intimate or your first three dates are like a walking coffee date for 30 minutes each. So it's hard for us to tell you a definitive timeline. It's really based on your gut feeling. I'm spending time with this person. I really like them. I actually don't want to see other people. And me on the receiving end of that person would be like, I want to hear that. I would want you to tell me that. That's why we can't be afraid to have these conversations. And they can be a series of conversations. They don't need to be this sit down and chat conversation. It could be something as simple like, hey, I'm like really digging our time together. Like that is positive reinforcement that is not putting anything out there. But then of course, if they have someone else, if you guys are sharing this moment of like, we're really bonding, we're really loving this this is so exciting if someone else comes around and asks that person for exclusivity they're gonna be like wait i have this other person let's Mm -hmm. talk about it i think too the point around the number of dates is such a good one because we're you know so achievement focused so numeric focused and i've definitely been victim of this too of like by day three like we need to be intimate in some way by day five Mm -hmm. we need to feel like we're moving into being a couple and it doesn't work that way because three dates to could be we've heard people say that they've been dating for months and they go on one date every month or yeah. like one date every yeah. three months and yeah. it's like that's not the same as if you're seeing this person you know multiple times a week and mm-hmm. you know like for me for instance with my current partner I've actually never defined the relationship as soon as we had and I think one was that I just felt right really early it felt different but also we saw each other multiple times in a week like it wasn't mm-hmm. just like this one time a week maybe once every other week week like I think there's just so many variables that can say what the connection is and even if you're seeing someone once a week like we we said in last week's episode you could have totally surface level conversations or you can really get to know this person yeah let's hold that thought for a quick message And maybe someone's asking, like, when do I know that's where we're at? Maybe some some of us are not as in tune with, like, maybe how we're feeling towards the other person. I guess for me, the time marker has always been the time when I decided that I didn't want to go on any more dates. It's just I just want to keep hanging out with this person. And the times where you're still like formalizing the dates, when's our next date? Like, well, let's schedule a next date. That probably doesn't feel as much of a relationship as like, hey, want to hang out Friday? Let's do something. Like you just saw each other yesterday. You're already yeah. making plans to see each other. I think that's so key because I, I mean, for me, when I met my current partner, I wasn't dating other people just because of just the way it happened to time mm-hmm. out. And I've also moved past the stage of feeling like it needs to be a numbers game and lining yeah. up 
up multiple dates. So I was not dating anyone. He was dating a few people, or he had gone on a few dates and was like actively chatting on the apps. And he had shared with me, you know, before we had some of these exclusivity conversations, like I have these people that have reached out to me on the apps, but I decided like, I don't want to respond because I'm really Mm. enjoying like this and I want to focus on this. And I think like it wasn't saying like we need to be exclusive right now. It's just sharing where you're at. And I know there is an element of bravery that comes with that. But I think you again, I think you know, deep down, like if this person's going to be receptive or not, because I was super into him, I was psyched to hear that. But if I wasn't, it would have freaked me out. But then Mm -hmm. at the same time, like that wouldn't have lasted anyways, right? Yeah, good. like good. Yeah, if it freaks you out, then get out, like stop wasting each other's time. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of this move. So I think that before you've had like a DTR conversation or anything, how can you start to move yourself as a couple a little more and start to feel that way? So for instance, when you do early dates, you're typically meeting at a location. And how can you start transitioning that into you are arriving at this location together like you would if you were a couple? So for instance, what I would love to do is like have someone come over first. And clearly you need to get to the point that you're comfortable with this person in your home. But hopefully if you're trying to have a relationship with them, you are getting to that point. And if you're not, that probably says that you're not ready and not there yet. And one of the things that I would do is I would like either they would offer to be like, oh, let me come to your house first if they kind of took the initiative or if they weren't taking that initiative I'd be like hey like do you want to come over first for some like wine and cheese and then we can go to the restaurant Mm -hmm. something that like makes it we're now operating as a couple I think that is a huge step forward so then when these conversations happen it's like you're already doing the motion and it's an Mm. it's an obvious next step I truly truly love that that is such a great way to build connection with each other. And if you live in a big city where you don't have a car, because I really love the whole picking up on dates. Yeah. Like either, either I'm picking someone up or they're picking me up. But in a city like San Francisco or New York, you're not picking people up by car. You can still pick them up by foot. Like it's yeah. fun to, I, I'll meet you at your doorstep and then we'll walk to the restaurant together. Maybe exactly. we'll get some coffee along the way or let's, I want to show you this statue that I really love. So then you start having having shared experiences uh, versus this like, yeah, waiting for someone to show up at a restaurant or a bar feels very much me versus you. It does not feel like you're on the same team yet. So that's a really great way to build that connection. Show up together. I love what you said too, is like, even if you're not comfortable having this person in the house, meet Mm -hmm. at your doorstep. Like there's Mm -hmm. many different things that you can do to get those wheels turning. And I, you know, I I remember like my boyfriend picking me up, even Mm -hmm. to go to his house to like make dinner or something. And it was so nice because it made it feel like, like I'm, you know, one caring for you, but also like we're in it together to take this next move. Yeah, that's so great. So there you go. Like shifting your focus less on how many dates you've been on, should you DTR, is now the right time, to how can I build a connection with this person where we feel more like a team yes. so that we know, we, we get a glimpse of what it's like to be in a relationship with each other before we make that decision to DTR or be exclusive. And then you're not losing anyone. You're just, you know, like if yeah. that person was to meet someone else, that's a better fit for them. Like you just need to accept that. Like if you, I really believe if you can feel like you're doing all you can, You cannot Mm -hmm. control the way the other person reacts. If you're not putting your full self out there, then there's always this what if. Like, what if I had actually showed a little more interest? Or what if I had made my my intentions more clear? So Mm -hmm. how can we move that we don't have any of these what ifs and then just accept everything else will fall into place, whether that's what you want or even if it's not what you want in that moment? That's great. No regrets. No looking back. No regrets. Oh my God. I had so many years that I just didn't make moves because I was like waiting or afraid or whatever. And I wish I just did. And then at least I would have an answer. Yes. Yes. And then fucking move on. Exactly. Get the answer. (laughs) Move on. 
So you can go to brunch, damn it. Yes, exactly. Okay, last thing to add here, though, with this get the answer, move on. I think like if you are, you know, early, like within the first month, maybe not everyone is there, isn't there yet. And that's okay, too. Like as long as you feel like this connection is building and there's a chance it will get there. But I think we do need to be cognizant that people move at different speeds. And ultimately, if someone's not moving at the speed you want to, then of course, it's your decision then to be like, this isn't the right fit because we're not aligned. But I think especially if we're going to say like, I want to be with someone from date one, like that just might not be realistic either. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Happy brunching. (laughs) Yeah, we'll leave you all to brunching. Send in your questions. You can email us hello at datablepodcast.com or you can DM us on Instagram at datablepodcast. We love the questions. Keep them coming because we're not stopping these episodes so we need the questions yep if you're not already subscribed to the podcast make sure to do that because you'll get these episodes as soon as they drop just a reminder that our primary episode drops on tuesdays and now our brunch talk drops on sundays so if you're subscribed you will get access first so make sure you're subscribed yeah subscribe ding 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 okay happy brunching (laughs) we'll see you all next time on brunch talk bye The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Stay dateable.